to be to be fine. Eh? Yeah. There's any problem with <laughs> shop. Yeah. Okay, good morning, guys. Yeah, so I'm sorry for starting a little bit late. We're setting up the system. So with me, I have Dr. Edgar Moa. Edgar Moa will take us through um, the seminar for today. He will introduce himself. I'm not sure if he wants everyone to introduce themselves as well before we start, but I think from our experience last seminar, it took a lot of time because we had a lot of people online. Yeah, so probably during discussion, people can then introduce themselves before or they comment or say anything. Yeah, so the floor is yours, Dr. Edgar Moa. You take us through your presentation for today. Thank you. Um, are those online able to hear us well? Yes, yes we can hear you. Oh. All right, okay. So Edgar Moore. All right, good morning, everyone. Yes, I'll take you through a brief uh, presentation on research registration is uh, conducted by the NCRST, the National Commission on Research Science Technology. All right, so just a bit of a background on uh, the NCRST. The NCRST is an institution that was uh, created by an Act of Parliament, uh, the Act of 2004, to monitor, to coordinate, and to um, yeah, and, and 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 to what is the third uh, aspect? Um, basically, on research, it's the institution that uh, is in charge of research for um, for the country Namibia. All right, so part of uh, the mandate for which uh, the NCRST is established is this bit here, research registration, which falls under the monitoring and supervision of research of the country. All right, and The uh, research certificates and permits and uh, authorization um, permits that are given. I will in a moment uh, uh, delve more into the differences between those. Uh, but basically those are the products that are given for um, anyone that wishes to conduct research in Namibia. All right, so who should register? Uh, we'll break it further, but uh, basically everyone that does research in the country, be it uh, people that are coming from uh, or people or institutions coming from outside the country or uh, people or institu institutions that are conducting uh, from uh, Namibia itself. All right. Um, I think I'll get back to all of that, but I just wanted to get to this slide to show you how the process works. All right, so we have a, a set of uh, application forms, or rather they are um, a set of application forms for the NCRST. Um, there is one for a research certificate and there's one for a permit um, as well as uh, I'll indicate at a later stage the authorization. But then the difference between the two, the research certificate is applied for by institutions that are based in Namibia 
um, say for example, NAST. And NAST has a, set, a research certificate. So for NAST to be registered as a research institution, uh, they are uh, these forms that they complete and then submit to the NCRST to process. And uh, there's a uh, fee to that if it were a private institution, but NAST is a, a government entity, so therefore no fees are um, applicable to government institutions. All right, so NAST will apply for a certificate once they have a certificate. That certificate then enables them to then have a series of uh, research projects, for example, um, in the case of this program, um, NAST has already a certificate, and um, you as students will then uh, be applying for research authorization, the third product that I referred to. So that research authorization is for individual research because you are say maybe you are 10 or whichever the case uh, the number of you as students so each of you will have to apply for research authorization all right and how that happens uh, i think i will go more in detail or maybe i can preempt it here so what what happens the reason for that is opposed to NAST having the certificate and then just giving you authority to do your research. The reason for that is that um, they are custodians of uh, the different research mandates of which you are um, you may be researching into. For example, um, if one was to research on um, environmentally related research topics, so the custodian for that is the Minister of Environment, Forestry and Tourism. If you were to research on a research topic relating to fisheries and uh, marine resources, then it will be the Minister of Fisheries and Marine Resources. Um, agriculture and uh, correctional services, the list goes on. So depending on which line your, your research interest is into, um, the custodians of such um, will have to, uh, to be informed. Number one, they will also have to uh, review your research to say if in terms of uh, ethical standards, it meets uh, the ethical standards of, say, the Minister of Health, if you are doing something related to them. Because otherwise, if uh, NAST were just going to give you a license to go and research, and your proposal somehow um, is not in line with the standards for the Minister of Health, um, then there will be a problem between NAST and the Minister of Health. So, that's one reason why each of your research projects individually have to be approved by um, the custodian of uh, yeah, the, that research line. All right. And the second reason is because <clears throat> NCRST is operating as a one stop uh, shop center, uh, for lack of a, a better word in that the country wishes to avoid duplication of research. So for all research that has been conducted in the line of, say, uh, water uh, in the Ministry of Agriculture, um, the ministry itself may have conducted a number of research projects which they have maybe their housing in their databases there. Um, maybe DRFN may have conducted some research on water as well, which they are also housing uh, within the uh, their institution. You now may have done the same, some other institutions may have done the same, but these are in silos. So therefore the NCRST, the 
the idea is for all research relating to uh, using this example of water, NCRST should have a database. To so say these are the research projects that have been conducted within this line. So that anyone that comes into the country to come do research in that line, they avoid duplicating and repeating that which was done already. If it's not published, if it's published, it's well and good because you will see it. Uh, but if it's not published, it's there somewhere in the ministry or it's there somewhere in another institution, you will not know. So you may think this is a brilliant idea. This uh, 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 I'm going to fill a gap um, if I take this, if I undertake this research, only to realize later to say, well, that was done by DRFN already and we already know the results. And so to avoid that, the duplication of research, the NCRST acts um, is the second reason why uh, research has to be um, um, registered, the authorization for that matter, um, for you as a student. All right. And yeah, so that's the the process for so for for you, the first thing NAST as an institution, if it did not have uh, a certificate, NAST was going to apply to receive a certificate from the NCRST. And once it receives that, then for all research projects, especially for postgrad uh, from the master's level, master's PhDs, and uh, researchers, lecturers themselves. Um, for each individual research project, NAST would have to apply um, for research authorization, right? You complete the form with your supervisors, but however, I think it's uh, the project unit, uh, uh, what's the name of the, this? No, no, this, this lady, the lady I've worked with, the more was the the unit. Who? Oh. Where you are? Reni, yes. So, Reni is the entry point and the exit point of all research related uh, um, applications that come from NAST. For NAST, she is the one that uh, has been in charge. Right, so all students, all lecturers, all researchers, um, after the, receiving the ethical clearance of NAST, uh, they bring the applications to RENI, and then RENI takes to uh, NCRST, and NCRST in response, uh, when they offer feedback, they come through here, and she then uh, goes back to the researchers. All right, so that, that, that's the, uh, the process. All right, and then if the second part, which is a permit, this one is issued similarly to what would be issued to you as uh, um, under NAST. But however, this one now is issued to institutions and researchers that are outside of the country. All right, so the University of Stellenbosch, for example, if they want to come and conduct research here in Namibia, when they apply, they don't receive a certificate and authorization. They then receive a permit. All right. The difference between the two, the permit is paid for um, an amount of uh, 7,000, a total of 7,000. All right. So whereas a certificate, if it were a private institute, it would pay 2.5 is a once off. And for all the research projects uh, that such an institution will carry, uh, they are free of charge. So for a public entity such as uh, NAST, it's uh, free of charge um, at all. But so the permit is paid for 7,000 and um, the process that uh, such an application undergoes is similar to the one I just explained uh, for you as um, a researcher residing under NAST. 
So when we the NCRST receives uh, the application, they process it, and after in-house clearance, they then uh, send it to the relevant. They will determine the relevant uh, um, authorities that or stakeholders that need to review such an application. Um, for example, if it relates to health related studies, then there is an ethical uh, clearing committee for the Minister of Health, which um, is made up not only of uh, staff members of the Minister of Health, but other stakeholders who are experts in uh, health related um, matters. So the NCRST will determine to which of those it should go. All right. And the reason for that, there was an incident where um, in the past, before the NCRST came into existence, different ministries used to issue permits for to conduct research within their ministry for, 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 for different researchers. So there was an incident where the Minister of Environment and Tourism back then um, issued a permit to someone to go conduct research on seals. Because these seals were found in the park, their park um, at the coast, the park that belongs to the Minister of uh, Environment and Tourism. All right, so they issued the permit from their side. Oh, there are people waiting in the lobby. Oh, so OK. Thank you. Yeah, so when they reviewed the application from the applicant, from their side, it was OK. Ethically, it was ethically sound. So they gave a permit to this particular researcher to go and conduct the research. However, when they went at the cost, then they met officials from the Minister of Fisheries and Marine Resources, who then uh, requested for a permit that allows them to work on the uh, resources there. And they, they produced the permit from the Minister of Environment and Tourism. And they were, they were brought back. I said, but uh, we were never consulted as the Minister of Fisheries because we are the custodians of uh, fisheries and marine resources. Um, so apart from you getting a permit from the Minister of Environment and Tourism, you should have also consulted with us so that in terms of our ethics, we also clear your research that is ethic uh, ethically sound. And then that's when you are going to conduct your research. So to avoid these inconveniences, because it may come a point where your research is touching into um, the Minister of Health, into the Minister of uh, Agriculture, Water, uh, and Land Reform, into the Minister of Environment, into different stakeholders. So to avoid you going individually to all of those, the NCRST does that part for you. So when you apply, they then the NCRST takes the application to all of them simultaneously. So if there are three involved, it will send to all three for them to clear their bit. So if they are satisfied with their part, then they will clear. So once all the three are satisfied, then a permit um, is then given from the NCRST or the authorization in the case of uh, you who are residing under the under NAS. All right, so okay, so I've, I've I've narrated that to say it's it's all research institutes in Namibia receive a certificate, and then after that, that's when they for each individual research project they will then apply for. A research authorization. All right. And on the application forms for research institutes, 
such as Nest. It is expected that NAST as an, a research institute will uh, constitute uh, an internal um, research ethics committee um, that clears your project uh, proposals internally from the NCRST, not, not, not the NCRST, but from NAST. So I know for a fact there is such a committee for NAST. Uh, which clears all research projects before they um, they come to the NCRST. So it's only until such a time when you receive an ethical clearing letter from NAST um, that we can, that rather I keep we because I used to work for the NCRST. Yeah, so that, that that's when um, your application can actually be considered by NCRST. So if it's not cleared in-house by NAST, NCRST will, will bring it back to NAST. And until there's a clearance from uh, in, internally here. And, and, and also, as a researcher, I think for you guys under NAST, um, there is, uh, if you haven't signed yet, you will sign in future, um, some obligations to say all research that you do belongs to NAST. I, I, I hope you have an, an understanding like that. Yes, you will be rewarded uh, with a certificate at the end of your studies, your PhD certificate. Um, but however, since you are studying under NAST, the ownership of that, of the research you would have conducted belongs to NAST. So therefore, it's easier for all applications coming from NAST or another registered institute within Namibia to, um, to process them without worrying to say who owns that kind of uh, um, research. But it's a different case when an institution from or researchers from outside of the country um, are the ones applying, all right? Or maybe they have some sort of collaboration with an institution that's based here in Namibia, all right? So in which case then the NCRS would uh, require to see the uh, the conditions of the M MOUs uh, between such institutions regarding that research. So who owns um, the bigger chunk of that research? All right, so if NAST with a collaborating partner internally with another institution from uh, the US, for example, and NAST was to own 50% um, or 51 or 60% of that uh, particular project. Then between the two institutions, the application should be applied through NAST. So NAST should be the applicant. So therefore, the fees that are involved when you are applying as um, an institute or researcher coming from outside of Namibia then will not apply in that case. All right. But however, they reverse or rather the opposite um, then will mean for the institute or researchers from outside will then have to apply, in which case um, the fees involved will be applicable. All right. And the reason for that, in the past, Namibia has encountered uh, uh, some uh, negative experiences uh, where it was only at the stage of uh, patenting the products of the research conducted in Namibia that uh, Namibia realized we, we have lost. All right, the case of Hudia, 
the case of uh, the Devos Club. It's only when they they became products that are on the shelves. And there's nothing we Namibia could have done at that stage. It's already patented. Um, the research was conducted uh, without any form of uh, um, monitoring. Well, it's it, the, the, that, that was way back um, when researchers from uh, uh, um, from Germany, I think, took advantage of that. And most of the products that you see of the Devos Club um, are, are, are from Germany. All right. So to avoid similar cases repeating themselves, hence they need to declare the ownership. All right. So if Namibia is to own um, the research, of course the NCRST is there to promote promote research. So therefore, there will not be uh, fees charged for that. All right. So, but however, if the research is to be owned by um, institutes or people, researchers uh, from outside, then there is a smaller fee, which still doesn't justify if um, a lot of money will be generated from the commercialized product that will come out of uh, such a research. But at least there is some form of uh, um, fee that is then paid in that regard. All right, so the research certificate, the permit and the authorization are all valid for a period of only one year. And the reason for that is because if it were to go for two or three years, then it will, it becomes difficult for the NCRST to monitor. Hence, annual feedback is required so that uh, if in the event the conditions that you were given on your permit or research authorization, um, due to COVID, for example, um, things have changed. The way things are done now have changed. So if you were given a permit in last year and COVID has brought different uh, uh, um, realities now, there are new conditions that ought to be added to your permit. Maybe others need to be uh, revised to be uh, um, removed from your permit or your authorization. So hence, they are renewed um, every year, even if it's a project that lasts for five years. So each year, uh, the NCST requires some sort of feedback to say, we have progressed this year, we are at this point. So next year, we are progressing with maybe objective two or objective three or something in that line. All right. Um, All right, I think I've uh, narrated uh, this bit to say once an institution has a certificate, then it then applies for individual research projects. Um, the NCRST takes those to the relevant uh, stakeholders who are the custodians of uh, such research. And then After the permit or authorization is issued, after a period of a year, the NCRST will expect uh, some feedback from you as a researcher. Um, even if it's your project is only um, for a period of one year or six months, at the end of that one year, the NCRST um, expects you to provide uh, some feedback, um, some report. 
Steve. All right, so the research permit which I indicated is paid for. It's a straightforward uh, scenario for research institutes or researchers that are based outside of uh, the country. When they come to research in Namibia, for them to follow the process of uh, receiving a research permit. However, there is a case where Namibians, I think the understanding when it was differentiated to say Namibian based researchers and non Namibian based researchers, um, the distinction was, the understanding was to say a researcher or institute that's based outside of Namibia it will be straightforward, but however, a, a Namibian researcher who may be based here in Namibia or based outside of Namibia, but studying or conducting such research under a research institute based outside of Namibia, who are then grouped as non-Namibian based because the they are they are categorized like that because of the ownership of such research. The intellectual property will it belong to a Namibian research institute or it will belong to an institute outside of Namibia? In the event, say for example, a university, you are a student, a PhD student with the University of South Africa, but you are a Namibian and you are coming to conduct research here in Namibia. You will be regarded as non-Namibian based because who owns the intellectual property? From the example I gave to say from US students, whatever you do is property of NAST. You'll be recognized by the PhD certificate uh, at the end, but what you do is property of NAST, the intellectual property. So that's why Namibians who are studying with the institutions outside of Namibia, but coming to do research here in Namibia, are then classified as non Namibian based. And this is where the NCRST has received a lot of uh, criticisms. To say, yeah, but it's Namibians, you should uh, create an enabling environment for Namibians themselves to, to grow. So um, the understanding of such people would be, yes, since I'm a Namibian, I've gone to a university outside to, to gain knowledge, uh, to be trained in research, so therefore you should allow me to do this research for free. But however, the intellectual property, just like I indicated in the cases of Odia and the Devil's Claw and many others, in the event your research for such a university outside of Namibia is commercialized, who is going to benefit out of that? Namibia is not going to benefit anything out of that. Hence, it's classified as such. All right, so these are just uh, the different forms that uh, are available. I think I can share that with uh, uh, Dr. Mabuku. The different forms, uh, in fact, for you, I think it will just be the same form that you will you'll have to complete for your, for your research projects. And like I indicated, once you do so, then the internal reviewing committee for NAST clears your research. Once it clears that, then your research project 
um, application rather comes to uh, Reni, and from there uh, the NCRST takes over. All right. I think uh, I've said much of uh, what's on the other slides. All right, so yeah, though I've highlighted this, it's a similar situation for researchers outside of Namibia. When they receive a, a permit, the NCRST will then take to the relevant authorities and issue a permit if it's approved, and then they pay the 7,000, and um, they, at the end of each year, it is expected uh, for them to give some report, some progress report. And yeah. I think the last bit are the fees, which I was referring to. So for Namibian-based research institutes, for the certificate, if it, it is a private entity, like IUM, um, it's a private university, so for them to receive a, a certificate to be registered, they, they, is, they pay that 1,000 application fee, and upon uh, the approval and issuance of the certificate, they then pay the 1.5, so a total of 2.5. So for public in, uh, institutes, uh, it's, it's free of charge, all right? So for non-Namibian-based uh, researchers or institutes, it's $2,000 application fee, and upon approval um, for the issuance of the permit, that's when they pay the 5,000. All right, I think at this point, I would like to, to pause for some questions, for some, any sort of interrogations uh, or follow up. Thank you so much. Clarification on you said the final part is where it goes to Reni. Now, Reni is a person. What is the title of that person? Oh, what is the title there? I think she's all I know, she's under the project coordination unit. Project coordinator, yes. So she's the project coordinator. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so in case tomorrow she's no longer there, somebody else is here. Yeah. Oh, you, you are right. Yeah, so it goes to that office, and then from there it comes to the NCRST. Yes, madam? Yes. Yeah, so they at the end of uh, a year, period of a year, and this period of a year kicks in as soon as you receive the permit or research authorization. So if you were to receive it today, so it means next year, June, end of June, uh, will then be the period for which you are expected to report. So if, if you don't, then the NCRST would communicate to you, maybe via email, to remind you that your report is due. 
And if uh, still you choose to ignore, yes, they, there are penalties to that. There may be monetary penalties that you may have to pay, um, but uh, the biggest that the NCRST uses is uh, is to 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 alert um, all journals, scientific journals publishing. Yeah, to say should this person such a research come in. In fact, for most journals now, they require a permit. Um, before they can allow you to publish. So if you give that and then the NCRST reaches out to them to say, um, don't publish such research. Because this person has not obliged to what they initially um, agreed. Um, then you can be blacklisted uh, by a lot of journals and I think as a researcher, that's the worst, the worst uh, form of punishment that you can have. Money, I think you can pay. Whether they charge you a million, you can pay. But to be blacklisted, I think that shoots down your your career. Um, yes. Find out. Mm. Are these policies applicable to Namibia? No. No. Then they they are on countries where they are going to carry the research will then have to do a similar process. Yeah. So that, that that's why we the example I gave you to say if a Namibian citizen is studying with a university outside of Namibia, then here in Namibia will charge that person because the IP is going out outside of the country. So similarly, the country of the origin of such a student should follow the, 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 the a similar approach. Because the IP, the student is going to research in that country, the, that IP comes to Namibia, comes to NAST. So if they don't charge, then it's the their own arrangement, but yeah, some some most countries do charge. Yeah. So for Namibia, you will not have to worry anything in that case. Yes, sir. Let's get to follow up. Mm. Yeah. 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 In your personal capacity, you mean independent from NAST. You are, as a PhD student, you'd wish to publish independent of NAST or under NAST. Yeah, if you if it's under NAST, then it's straightforward. <laughs> Unless you do it independent of NAST, then yeah, then it will be a different case, of which you are actually not allowed if you are. Mm. Yes. If I'm getting you right, as a corresponding author, still you will be applying under NAST or just independent? Maybe that's where I'm not getting you. 
Because if you are applying under NAST as a corresponding worker, it's your, your thing is cleared through NAST, so you, you, you don't require to apply for a separate thing. Yeah. And unless I didn't get you right. Yeah. Thank you for that question. In fact, it's one thing I should have indicated in my presentation. Yeah, the the earlier the better. <laughs> <laughs> so b basically to avoid delays, I don't know if your program is running for is it two years, eh? three years. Okay. So to avoid delays, soon as uh, I think you'll come at some stage where uh, proposal writing is through your proposals. You have to go present your proposals and uh, they are approved to say you are good to go for data collection. At that stage, it's good to apply for, 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 for clearance then. Because I think when your proposal is approved then it's basically approved by the internal ethical clearing committee of NAST. So soon as you receive that mm, mm. oh okay oh oh they're only hearing <laughs> okay okay all right so the last question that was asked now is uh, how long does it take for um, clearance of uh, research application? All right, so and uh, this is why I gave the answer to say you should apply as soon as possible. Uh, the earlier the better. Um, the reason being The different stakeholders that need to review and clear your research application, some of them meet weekly. So for such, you will get your clearance within a week. Some of them meet monthly. So for such, it's, 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 it's uh, the logic follows. Some of them meet every second month and the longest they meet every third month so meaning if your data collection you are planning to do your data collection um, next year june you want to start doing the data collection next year june or maybe say next year feb so for the committees that meet every third month, it means you should you should submit your application by somewhere end of October, November. Otherwise, once it misses that committee sitting, then it means it has to wait for another three months. And the worst case scenario may be when it misses and then only meets the next session, there may be some issues that may come out from there, uh, which they will send back to say, no, but the this applicant needs to align this to that, and then you again go for another. So it, it, it delays you in the end. So that's why I say it, the earlier the better. So soon as you are cleared from here to say, um, Here's your ethical clear, clearing letter, uh, which I hope, uh, Dr. Mavuku, um, you will assist the the guys. Soon as that stage comes, please remind them because we have had incidences that were really nasty, um, and you you would feel for the student. 
but but there's nothing you can do. You would feel for the student. The student now has to extend by another year just because they missed that. Yeah, so please, when that time comes, just remind all of them to say, please apply. Otherwise, uh, we don't want the unnecessary delays. We want to see you wearing your gowns in the time that you you are supposed to. Yeah, so. Okay, follow up. Mm. Yeah, thank you. In fact, before, oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah, so the, the question is, are there no other means to expedite the process uh, of saying the longest period it takes for some committees to avoid uh, some uh, research that are targeting seasonal um, variabilities to not to, to 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 avoid missing out? Yeah, so. Before the NCRST came in, um, to oper operationalize this, it was the case to say up to three months or more for some. For others, it used to take much longer than that. Right, so when the NCRST took over this process and with the blessing in this guise of COVID, um, it has shortened a bit. The maximum I've given you three months because that's what is on paper. On paper is three months the longest. But however, in practice, up until last year, end of last year, um, the longest uh, became two months. All right, so the NCRST tried from its side to push for such committees to say, but uh, we are really delaying and hampering research if we take that long. And well, the reasoning from their end was the committee members, for example, the Minister of Environment, Forestry and Tourism, the committee members of uh, that uh, research ethics committee. Like I indicated, they are made up of uh, different experts we have from universities. We, from here, there was a few from UNAM, from, from different institutions that deal with the environmental related uh, um, uh, research and some staff members from the ministry it's, itself. So, some of those staff members, key staff members, are based at their uh, parks. So some are based in Etosha, some are based in Ludris, some are based in Katima, some are based all over the country. So for them to come to these meetings, um, obviously there is a financial implication to that within their ministries. So hence they, their ministries, I think in terms of uh, trying to economize their budgets, they then stretched it to that long, to three months. So if they can pay them every three months when they come for such meetings, it's much better than having them come every month. I think uh, their budget would deplete. Yeah, so like I stated, the Bless these guys of COVID, um, the odds have changed now. Um, things can be then online, can be virtual meetings to do that. Hence, the, the reduction of that 
time span to only two months maximum. So most cases, they do take now a month. Every month they they, they meet. But where not possible, maybe most of their experts, the key experts, have other engagements. Maybe they are attending meetings outside of the country and the like, then they cannot proceed. So they will have to wait. That that's when it goes to two months. But yeah, so. But the. The, 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 the idea really is to shorten that period to if possible to have maybe two to three weeks uh, permits are cleared. So it's. It's progress, uh, something that uh, the NCLS is taking. With time, progress will come with time. The thing started from where it was worse off, but the idea is to have it two to three weeks. It's it's cleared. So hopefully that happens uh, within the time you are you are still uh, here. Yes, Doc. Mm. Oh, that come with the application. Um, this didn't come with it here. All right, so. <clears throat> oh, yes, when you are submitting the application to the NCRST, what are the documents that uh, need to come along with the application? All right, so the basic ones, the research project proposal, um, you will need to also submit ethical clearing letter from NAST of uh, your project, and then you will then need to submit your your ID or passport. And since you are students, yeah, so you, you, you are obviously under under NAST. So if you were a researcher from outside, you will also have to submit um, what, what, what is the thing? Your residential details where you stay uh, and, and, and a letter. Yeah, an ethical letter from your institute. If you are just a researcher um, from based in South Africa, uh, maybe in your, your with your own institute, then your approval from such an institute that's clearing you to come and do. Um, conduct research here, but for let me, let me focus on the case of you guys. So apart from uh, yeah, your ID, your passport, and yeah, that's basically it. Because the rest of the documents, NAST will uh, stand in for you because NAST is the legal entity. Um, that acts on your behalf. And the the importance of actually you residing under NAST, the advantage rather, and you handing over ownership of your research to NAST, so that uh, when NAST, NAST is the one that's applying on your behalf, is that uh, legally should there be any legal challenges that result from your research then NAST being the owner being the applicant is the one uh, liable for for that so if you 
for example, submitted your research application. It's under NAST, but however, Rennie's office did not sign off to say, yes, uh, this is under NAST. If it just comes from you and it's indicating it's under NAST, if NCRST were to process that application, and then there are legal challenges to that, 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 that will come to your research. Then uh, the NAST uh, management will distance themselves to say, no, we cannot commit ourselves to that because it did not, we did not acknowledge this application. We did not sign it off. So this fellow is on his own and uh, we'll deal with him however you see it fit. So to, to avoid that, um, please follow as much as possible the process that your NAST applies on your behalf. Yeah, so, yes, Doc. Mm. Mm. Thank you. The question is, can uh, Namibian citizens conduct research independent of any affiliation to any institution? Yes, they can. And at the moment, until such a time, the act and the regulations change. Um, at the moment, such researchers um, can only apply for uh, research authorization. All right, they apply for, for research authorization independent of any um, affiliation and it's free of charge. Um, they don't pay anything. However, if you own a, an institution, a company or some other entity uh, through which you wish to then conduct your research, then you would have to register um, such a research institute um, as a private entity and then um, it will only be paid for the certificate and then the projects that you carry are free of charge. Yes. Okay, there's a question there. Yes, madam. <laughs> NCRST, yes. Yes, yes. Yeah. Um, thank you. At, at the moment, this process uh, is still in its emphasis stage, I would say. So however, that's that's the goal. So I'm not sure whether this year it will be operationalized um, as you are indicating, but uh, um, the efforts that have been made so far um, is to even come up with, uh, oh, I didn't repeat the question. Sorry, yeah, so the question was, um, yeah, it has just run out of my mind. All right, so the, does the NCRST have the database now with all topics of research, past research that has been carried? Um, and is that available for researchers to access at the moment? All right, so 
The answer is at the moment the database is not functional. So, however, hopefully within this year it will uh, it will be functional. So, maybe just to contextualize the efforts that have been put in place by the NCRST up until uh, last year November in collaboration with other entities, of course, um, was such that uh, even the applications uh, for research permits certificates will all be done online. So we have uh, a good example of countries that have implemented that uh, Kenya, and uh, I think it's Canada and uh, a few others. So what, what, what happens there is that once you put in your application, at each stage it goes, you'll be able to see um, on the platform as well. So you would log, you'd register uh, on such a platform with all your details and um, each time you publish something you would also add it there so the database will be able to actually follow everything about you or everything about a particular researcher that you wish to know you just click on uh, um, into you just log into the platform and click on such a researcher all the details would come there right what they have published what they have done and all that so the, the application process also um, was to move to uh, towards that. So the ethical clearing committees will just be receiving their um, applications online. When it comes to their stage, they clear. When it comes to the stage of uh, the researcher paying, um, the researcher will be informed. The Minister of Finance will be able to process and and until it goes to the last stage. So the advantage of that is uh, exactly what he was uh, asking to kill off the time, the, the time span that uh, um, it takes to, to clear. So in that platform will then be the database. The database captured for all research conducted in Namibia. In fact, uh, it's such a system that uh, even if uh, you did not inform the NCRST that you are publishing and uh, the publisher did not request for a permit for you to publish, the moment your research uh, is published, that system will pick it up. Whether it's published in America, it's published wherever, provided they are there are words that relate the, the such research to Namibia. It will be picked up and it will report to say this has been published. Uh, that has, So in such a way, all research will then be kept in the database. Say this is what is done so far. It's saying I've managed. Mm. I was asking whether it's the Microsoft team. Oh, okay. Okay. Hey. They, they, when you click on the link, it takes you to Microsoft. <laughs> um, can can you guys please mute? We are able to hear your conversations here. Okay, all right. Yes, Doc. All right. Thank you. So the follow up question is. If. Uh, the research that's conducted the under NAST after somebody has received their certificate and is now independent of NAST, they are working elsewhere. Can they publish 
such research in their individual capacity. Um, I'm sure that will depend on the the conditions under which NAST pronounce themselves to say how they own your research. If it's indicated to say, well, if you leave the institution, uh, though you conducted it here, um, you would be free to publish, uh, then it's straightforward. However, if it's just indicating to say they own 100% of your research, um, that would be a crime. So if you do that, NAST will come after you and uh, um, they, they can actually put you in trouble. Yes, Doc. All right, in terms of the application process. All right, so the question is, is there a document that uh, that uh, would show how this process of research registration um, is to be followed by applicants? They they are research guidelines. Uh, research registration guidelines um, that up until the moment I was uh, still with the NCRST, they were um, they were not yet uh, published to um, publicly, but they are there. And in terms of uh, the legal uh, pronouncements, the act is there, the regulations as well are there, stipulating um, um, much of uh, the research registration process. But going much deeper into that are the guidelines which are, I just indicated uh, um, were in the process of being published. But yeah, so that, that, that's what is there available. All right, Doc, are you done so that we? Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. So the question is, Given the way these committee members are staying or located, uh, can the process be handled virtually? All right, yeah, so in fact, uh, that's what is happening now. Um, as I indicated before, it was only every uh, third month but however, now, um, as I indicated, with the blessing in disguise of uh, COVID, with this new normal that we are doing things, um, it has actually enabled committee members uh, to meet virtually. So now when they meet every second month or every month, um, it's virtually. They are only... I think once once in a while really that they meet physically. But yeah, so most of those are now virtual. And for those, of course, that uh, have been meeting every week or every other week, yeah, for them uh, that are based here in Windhoek, I think for them it still goes on uh, physically, but because the turnaround time is quick enough, um, I think for them it's okay. Okay. Yes, sir. Look, I want to be specific. Uh, following up on the question that Isabel asked um, from Zambia, 
and be under the SASCO graduate sponsorship. Yeah, uh, from what we read in, our, in the advert, it talks about us um, once in a while going back to our own countries to do data collection, but mostly will be here. Mm -hmm. So will that research be considered to be done outside the country because of the data collection, or it will be still considered to be to have been done here, since it's mostly here that we shall be and bring most of the works from here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. So the question is uh, for students that are coming from outside uh, Namibia, uh, we, who are encouraged to be from time to time going back to their countries to maybe do data collection and some form of research engagement in their own countries. But however, a bunch of what they do will be here in Namibia. Uh, will such research be regarded to be part of uh, Namibian research or otherwise? Is is that, did I get you right? All right, so thank you. So the, for, for as soon as uh, the resources that you are accessing for your research outside of Namibia, then uh, that research belongs to, well, not belonging, but the clearing for you to access such research should be then uh, be dealt by the country you are going to, uh, to do that. So you are only given clearance by the NCRST if you are to access resources within Namibia. Yes, I, I hope I got your thing right. Yes, do, do you have another follow up? But then in our case, we are saying most of the works will be done here then. Maybe during the holidays, that's when we shall get to our own countries. Uh. Yeah, so I still feel maybe. <laughs> yeah, go on. I still feel there, uh, there is need to clarify whether our research will be done specifically, I mean, will be considered as having been done here or outside the country. Okay, so, so what you have, what you will do in your own country is just the data collection, yeah. right? So the analysis, the write-up is here, all right? So, yes, so, so the ownership of your research, whether you conducted it here or outside of here, will belong to NAST. So, however, the permit for you to go and do the, that research, Namibia cannot issue that. So, Zambia has to issue you a permit to allow you access to their resources. Yeah, so the, the, your research, whether you do it there or here, still belongs to, to NAST. Yes. Yes. All right. Thank you. Um, any further questions? C can you share? Uh, a permit. Okay. Eh. Oh, can you have the same certificate or the same permit? Uh, if you are sharing. Yeah, so the question is, is it possible to use uh, one permit um, for different individuals that are doing similar research? The, the, the answer to that is unless the research is 100% the same. then you'll just be put as core researchers on the same permit. Then uh, it will be one research. It's one research and then uh, you as core researchers, maybe you bring in the portion of um, maybe say, for example, um, the research is 
the effect of uh, HIV and AIDS on uh, um, staff members of uh, Minister of Environment and Tourism conducting uh, conservation, the effect of that. So maybe your part deals more with the, the health, the health bit of that. So you will be doing the testing and, uh, and all that. That's the bit that your research is focused on. The other one is focused on maybe the conservation part. Um, so that maybe when you bring the two, then they make one research, one bigger research, then it's possible that way. But if your research is different in some way, uh, or maybe at some stage, you'd wish to, the ownership between the two of you becomes uh, an issue then. Um, to say, well, it's one research project, but who's in charge of that? Who's liable in case of uh, 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 legal, who's the legal, legal persona in that? So the one who's the legal persona is the one that owns that. So if the other person did a part of their project under the, the bigger one, and at some point they wish to then publish independently, um, then unfortunately they are overshadowed by the legal persona. Is the one now controlling that to say, well, you cannot or you, you can. So, but yeah, the possibility is there if one bigger project has uh, sub components that feeds into it, you can uh, receive one permit. Yeah. Any further questions? From online? Yeah. OK, maybe as, as, as people are still all right, someone is over. It's Renny. Yes, line. yes. Oh, good hi, Renny. How are you, yes, Dr. Good morning. morning. Um, I'm all right. How are you, Dr. I'm excited to be part of this meeting, and I'm glad you're now part of us, Dr. Moa. Just a quick response. There's a question that was raised by, um, just to add on to what Dr. Moa said, around the IP issues. With regards to the SGSP students, IP is shared. So it's not belonging to the student alone or NAST alone because they are funding partners and they are supervisors um, drawn from the Sadak region as well as Germany. So IP is always going to be shared. We can have a discussion around the um, ownership of even um, um, the, 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 the model that NAST uses for sharing of IP. But for specifically the SGSP, it's shared IP rights. And with regards to the issue of research permit application, I see there was also a question to say, how do they go about it? The Directorate of Research, Innovation and Partnerships within the university um, is the liaison party with NCRST. So following the initial ethical clearance at the faculty or departmental level, applications then come to the project services unit uh, falling under the Directorate of Research, Innovation and Partnership with your request to put, put in your permit application to, to the NCRST. So you don't go to the NCRST directly, colleagues, you go through the Project Services Unit and um, liaison will then be with um, PSU. And previously it was Reni and Dr. Moa, so it's a very interesting discussion. We, we will we will be counting on your support, Dr. Moa, since you have now joined NAST. So yes, it's PSU to NCRST, not students directly to NCRST. And the last one, I think, with regard to how can um, can one can, can permits be um, applied in Namibia if research is going to be undertaken in Zambia, for example. True to what Dr. Moa has said, you will need to go and get 
a, a permit for, 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 for Zambia, for example. There are commissions uh, that are established in, in all the SADC member states that are responsible and have similar functions to the um, NCRST in Namibia. So if you are going to do part of your data collection in Zambia, you need to also have a permit and you have to follow the regulations that are prescribed by your research commission in your respective country. You cannot say, because I've got the Namibian one, I can use it in Zambia. You still have to observe the statutory requirements for research within the country where you're also doing your data collection. And then lastly, I just wanted to add with respect to, to uh, if, if, for example, one permit can be used by multiple uh, researchers. True to what Dr. Moa said, for example, we can have a research consortium. So it's one research with multiple con components, as indicated by Dr. Moa. And in that case, we'll have one permit and all the core PIs or the research team will be covered by that particular permit. I just wanted to emphasize and reiterate uh, some of the issues that I just managed to um, learn of the moment I joined the meeting. Over to you, Dr. Moa. Thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Reni, in the making. Um, thank you, guys. Um, any further questions? Um, need for clarifications. But I must emphasize, all of you guys have to apply for research authorizations. Please don't forget, because uh, it's, it will be it will be a pity really to be robbed of uh, possibilities to publish in any publication uh, in any journal uh, just because you omitted the stage of uh, applying i mean you, you you don't lose anything it's free of charge and please uh, um, just ensure that uh, we stick to what is legally provided. Yeah, otherwise, thank you so much for your attention. OK, thank you very much, Dr. Moa. Um, and thank you very much for those who are online. I hope you managed to get one or two things from his presentation. And thank you for those who are physically here. Uh, just a bit of an announcement. Tomorrow we have another seminar from uh, 14 to 16. It's going to be on referencing and plagiarism. It's going to be offered by someone from the library, uh, I think Dr. Tetu. So please, those who are online, if you're interested in this seminar tomorrow, kindly join us. And we expect our students anyway, it's compulsory. So you come physically here. Yeah, so thank you very much. Uh, see you tomorrow at 1400 hours. Bye. Bye bye. Thank you, colleagues. Goodbye.